Tonight, I'm gonna show you how to make a giant Twix bar. Stick around. Greetings, my confectionery compadres, and welcome to Randy Makes Candy, where I help you make tasty treats that people love to eat. The other day, I was watching a video about making a homemade Twix bar, research, you know, and they said that theirs was going to be bigger than a regular Twix bar, which made me ask, well, what if I made a giant Twix bar? And with that, the journey began. Come along with me, and we'll see how it turns out. As always, I'd love to hear about your results if you decide to make your own giant Twix bar, as well as suggestions for other recipes you'd like to see in future videos. For the shortbread, I used eight ounces of butter, three and a half ounces of granulated sugar, and nine ounces of all-purpose flour. I made a double batch of caramel, as I wasn't sure how much I would need, so I used 30 caramels, one and a half cups of sweetened condensed milk, and one half cup of butter. Finally, I used two packages of Candy Quick for the coating. I'm using compound chocolate here instead of real chocolate because it's easier to work with than, face it, this ain't exactly a gourmet confection. I also used a mixer, a spatula, a 9 by 13 baking pan, a 12 by 4 and a half inch loaf pan, some parchment, and a saucepan. Okay, let's make some candy. We'll start with the shortbread. Add the butter to a mixing bowl and mix it for a few seconds to break it up. Gradually add the sugar to the butter and cream them together on medium until it's light and fluffy, which will take five to six minutes. Scrape the sides of the bowl two or three times during the process. Creaming the butter fills it with tiny air bubbles that acts like a mechanical leavening agent, which helps it rise and attain the proper texture. It also helps to evenly distribute the sugar throughout the dough. Gradually mix the flour into the creamed mixture until it's all combined. Spread the dough into the lined 13 by 9 inch baking pan. Bake it for 40 to 45 minutes until just lightly browned. Remove it from the oven and immediately cut two pieces that are a little smaller than your loaf pan. The remainder can be cut into whatever size pieces you'd like. Allow the shortbread to cool completely before removing it from the pan. For the caramel layer, add the sweetened condensed milk and butter to a saucepan over medium heat. Stir it until the butter is melted, then add the caramels and turn the heat to medium-low. Stir this continuously so the caramels don't burn. This is twice the amount of caramel I usually make, but I wasn't sure exactly how much I would need. As it turns out, the normal batch would have sufficed, but this way I have leftovers to use for something else. Set the caramel aside to cool while you move on to the next step. Melt one package of Candy Quick according to the directions and pour some of it into the lined loaf pan. You want to have right around a quarter of an inch of chocolate. Leave the remaining chocolate in the tray and we'll use that later. Put the loaf pan in the refrigerator so the chocolate will set. Once the caramel is cooled to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, spread a thin layer over one piece of shortbread. This will be used to hold the two pieces of shortbread together. Spread a thicker layer over the other piece of shortbread.
I knew there was a strong possibility that the shortbread would break during this part of the process, and there you go. Not a problem though, as no one will know unless you tell them. I think if I'd put the two pieces of shortbread together before putting them in the pan, they would have had enough structural integrity to survive the transfer. Lesson learned. Place the shortbread with the thicker layer of caramel on the chocolate in the loaf pan, caramel side down. Center it as well as you can. Place the other piece of shortbread on top of the first, caramel side down. Melt the remaining package of candy quick, along with the leftover chocolate from the first package, and pour it over the shortbread, letting it flow down the side so the shortbreads are completely covered. Save a few tablespoons of chocolate for later use. Return the loaf pan to the refrigerator until the chocolate is completely set. Remove the candy from the loaf pan, let it reach room temperature, then remelt the last of the chocolate and patch any rough spots you might have. You can also make the top of the bar look a little bit nicer. And that's it. Before we get to the tasting, I'll share a problem that I caused myself. I cut the shortbread too narrow which meant that the chocolate that made up the sides was very thick. That may have contributed to how difficult this thing was to cut. I was able to get some good slices out of it though, so not a total loss. So just be aware of that when you're cutting your shortbread. If, if you cut them and they're too big, you can always cut them down, but you can't cut them bigger. Okay, let's have a taste. Slanche va. Holy moly, this is phenomenally good. The thing that makes it, I think, is the shortbread. It's way better than real Twix and way better than store-bought shortbread. And it's so easy to make, I'm gonna be using it from now on, anytime I need shortbread. The caramel is great as well, which is why I keep using the same recipe. Final verdict, well, this is really a novelty item. I wouldn't make this as an everyday treat, but if you wanna make something for a special occasion that will impress your friends and family, you really ought to try these. I use three and a half ounces of bread. A 12 by four and a half baking, uh, which helps it rise and attain a ping, a ping, a pong. Way better than real Twix and way better than shore-bought store bread. 